Not long ago, we covered a really interesting face enhancement method for image restoration where instead of directly trying to upscale the whole image to enhance it, DFDNet instead take apart the important facial features like the eyes and the mouth and use a library of the features for reference to generate a highly detailed and accurate enhanced result to replace the feature that was taken out before. This was a big step towards an all-in-one image restoration program, but just a few days ago, super hard. Oh no, I mean, Microsoft released an open source AI called Bring Old Photos Back to Life. Looking through the official handpicked results first, as these are mostly the best results from this AI, it shows it has functions such as the noising, tone readjustment, face enhancement, and the most exciting one, physical damage restoration. Not only scratches can be removed, but also food marks and brown spots, and this is all done all together. So the handpicked results do look really impressive and promising. Promising. So the main question here now is that how well actually can our own images work on this AI? Just to clarify before we continue, there is a specific function where you will have to declare whether your input image has scratches or not. Well, not necessarily scratches exclusively, but it will just ignore the scratches if you do not activate that function. But what's the point of running without the physical damage restoration function? We are all here for that new and hot scratches removal, which most other AIs previously struggled to restore. So for test samples, I stole some images from r slash e restoration and r slash old school cool and saved a range of photos to test that I think it can be categorized in various difficulties for AI to restore. Starting from the easy section, the black image that has white marks on it is a masking layer generated by the AI. It is used to mark the physical damages on the original. And from these results, we can see where exactly the AI I view as scratches and where they decide to view it as non-scratches. Then the places that are viewed as scratches will be patched through pixel generation or how most people call it image in painting. These images are in the easy category because the damages are not as severe, only with thin or small damages needing to be detected and restored. So most of the images do look pretty well after this restoration, along with some color tone adjustments too. Some may argue that smaller scratches are harder for the AI to detect, but you'll see why I put these as easy as we have the hard category coming up next. These photos are damaged badly and sometimes have more things to fix other than just scratches, especially the parts where they have to restore large chunks of lost colors on important facial features like the eye that was erased here. This test will show how the AI will construct the features back, and whether if it'll look inhuman and creepy or generated per perfectly and fits even if it's not exactly how the original would look like. And I think we know which result this AI gives as we can see here. To improve from this though, maybe it can incorporate DFDNet's technique and directly replace newly generated features on top of the old and damaged features. While well, there could be multiple ways to actually fix this problem, but anyways, when the image is overly damaged and requires too much in-painting, it is pretty common that it just generates weird results or just ignores it. So unfortunately not as much hope for restoring as of now for these images, but definitely something people will look into fixing it in the future. To run it through your own images, I'll link the collab down in the description along with a quick tutorial of how to use it. This video is sponsored by Infinite Red. Infinite Red Consulting handles your mobile, web, and AI needs. If you're looking for someone to build your app, visit and reach out at infinite.red. And lastly, thank you guys for watching. Join my Discord if you have any problems related to the content in my video. Check out my Patreon and my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you all next time.